I get a lot of hate for having 5H9s and then there's no space between them to hook up the MIDI cables and like I, I route them a little bit differently for different things. You can kind of see something kind of pretty uniform over here and I just recently decided to try something that I do elsewhere on my pedal board and so I kind of wanted to show you how cool I think this sounds today. EBS makes I, I think some of the greatest bass centric foot pedals on the planet and honestly they sound pretty awesome on guitar too so um ebs is incredible and my my absolute must have favorite ebs pedal is the octabase i think it sounds a hundred times better than any other octaver i've ever tried however i love octavers i wish i had one of every brand every model i just think octavers are amazing so if I could only have two pedals, period, it would be the EBS Octabase and a Morley Wah. I use just the classic 2020 Wah now. That's what I use now because I like there to be no knobs, no frills on the thing. Um, my volume knob, you know, you don't have a choice. <clears throat> so this is an active volume pedal for Morley. So um, I love Morley. I love e EBS. EBS, excuse me. I love Eventide. So... And I also love Creation Audio Labs. That's what I use for boost and distortion. And got another distortion there. And I'll explain that here in a minute. The focus of my video, though, is to show you what I started doing with these even ties just a couple days ago to mimic what I already do with EBS pedals. So with the EBS pedals, obviously you can't see the cables underneath with these GH plugs. Um, these are awesome too. They're kind of the the solderless cables. Uh, frankly, if I'm correct, I believe they basically uh, make a lot of other companies' solderless cables ends. So, and might even supply the cables and people just kind of rebrand and repackage the stuff. So, I'm always like, go to the source. That's why I use SIT strings on all my instruments. So, that was a little side note. The Morley and the Grizzly bass are in line with each other. <clears throat> and that way, when I turn on the effects loop, all of a sudden I can use the wah and I can turn on or off the Grizzly bass um, preamp from Creation Audio Labs. Now, aside from that, that goes over up and to my boost, the MK423 from Creation Audio Labs. The Creation Audio Labs uses a Covenant cable splitter that I had custom made. That, each side goes to a left and a right. Right now I just have them matching at the moment because of guitar lessons. But a lot of times, with my bass, I might use one or the other. And then I might, might significantly change the tone of the two so that there's a real uh, stereo split influence that I like a great deal. Now, from the Creation Audio Labs, each one goes to only one pedal, because now, once we get here, we're left and right. And so, one side goes to an octabase, and the other side goes to the bass IQ, from both from EBS. I just feel like that gives me such a really clear Bootsy Collins sort of thing. And I learned it from being a Billy Sheehan fanatic. Um, like he often has one cabinet clean and one cabinet a little overdriven or, or even heavily overdriven. So a little distortion, such a distinct tone when you get to hear both of them. Most of the time, if you add distortion to a bass, you lose all the punch, all the meat to the bass tone. <clears throat> and I learned early, I got way into Cliff Burton. So I'd turn on a distortion pedal on my bass and all of a sudden I just disappeared in the mix. You know, you couldn't hear me and the drummer playing. It just sounded like you had too many guitar players in the band. So I had discovered because of Billy Sheehan, you leave one cabinet clean and it makes a world of difference. So I thought, oh, hey, what if I applied that to like my fanaticism of having um, the octabase on one side or my, my, my fanaticism of funk bass effects. So if, I was like, well, what if I had my EBS octabase on one side and my EBS bass IQ envelope filter on the other side? It is awesome. All right, so to demonstrate, I am going to use my Fender Precision Bass. It is a Tony Franklin Signature Fretless. So when you just hear my straight ahead tone here, uh, no frills, no EQing, just I only have the pedal board going into a pair of AccuGroove 210 punches. 
AccuGroove makes hands down the best bass guitar cabinets on the planet. Okay. So that's just what you're hearing in the room. Um, I don't know how great that sounds on the phone, but we'll see. So if I turn on, there's my clean, I'm gonna turn on the bass IQ. So now I'll show you just the octabase. Now, the two of them together combine, so now we have, let me see. Okay, so in the room, at least from my vantage point, you will not be able to tell, but the octabase is coming out of the speaker that when I'm facing them, it's coming out of the left, and the bass IQ is coming out of the right. All right, so I'll engage both of these. Okay, I, with my fretless Tony Franklin Fender Precision Bass and those two pedals, I could just lose myself just jamming totally all alone for hours. Like, I, I'm mesmerized by that tone. There, there, that leads into what I'm excited to show you today. <clears throat> okay, so for the last couple years, I've had my Eventides just, um, I guess, for lack of better terminology, as far as a pedal board is concerned, the Eventides were in, they were in series. And so I have one, I don't even know if you could see the labels, but I have one labeled Max 1, and then Core 1, Core 2, Core 3, and Core 4. That way, at least when I program them on the H9 control app, at least I'm like, oh, I know which one I'm messing with, etc. So, um, a while back I started contemplating, like, man, just like, I actually get inspired by the haters, even though I hate the haters, you know, fight fire with fire, just can't stand it. I don't, I don't know why when it comes to art and music, why the, like guys can be so competitive. I mean, <clears throat> I dealt with it when I was fanatical about my nine string bass. And it's just like, it is <clears throat> every time you turn around, some miserable person is sitting at home in their underwear at the internet, uh, trying to trash talk people for something cool. They have to show the rest of the world, which really sucks. If you're one of those guys, uh, move on. So I took some of my GH plugs, solderless cables, and I just, I just grabbed a couple. I didn't want to like uh, cut them to size yet or anything. You can see I've got some white ones here that I removed from the Eventides, and I threw those kind of surf green ones in place. And what I did is now coming out of each EBS pedal, each of the EBSs goes to, one of them goes to max one. So ironically, or not ironically, literally what I have going on here is the EBS base IQ, the envelope filter, goes into the max one so that I can use the octave or down on the, the octave down on the eventide. And then the octave base goes to an envelope filter on the one marked core one. I'm gonna turn off, actually, I'm gonna leave that compressor on because I think it sounds cool for what I'm doing, but I turned off the chorus and my delay is not on, but I love using five for, for my vantage point and my creativity. There are some really good reasons why I have five and why I had five hooked up in series. And I really don't care what other Eventide users have to say about MIDI controllers um, or running five of them in series. I just, I just don't care because I enjoy my Eventides and I'm glad that you enjoy yours. If you like having... MIDI controllers and you like using that stuff, I'm like, that is awesome. I'm like, I'm just glad you're getting to pursue your creative ideas with your pedals and I'm gonna do the same with mine. So, if you don't like it, move on. Like I said, I mean, geez, quit wasting everybody's time with all the hate, it sucks. So, as you can tell, I'm like, unfortunately, I'm kind of fired up and distracted by that as well because I don't appreciate it. But, back to my point and what I think is so cool here.
what I did is I thought, wow, okay, the EBS, they sound so good. Like, I, I love the EBS Octabase. I love that Octaver. Now, it's got some, uh, dare I say, some grit to it. Like, it's, you know, I always see people when they talk about Octavers, they talk about, you know, perfect tracking. And I'm like, in my opinion, it's like, for what I like about an Octaver, I'm like, that's not the point. Like, I want to hear and know that something's happening. I don't want a perfectly tracked um, Octaver that just basically matches and sounds like, you know, sounds like I used auto-tune and copied a track and put it an octave down. Whereas, I think that's cool, but when I'm just kind of entertaining myself with my pedal board, it's not the tone I like. So, that being said, Eventide is famous for exquisite tracking. So I thought, hey, um, I'll program an Octaver into the Max and I'll put an envelope filter into the Eventide. I'm not super fond of the the envelope filter that I programmed in the Eventide yet. I feel like I need to uh, keep tweaking it a bit till it's... I'd like it to sound a little more like the bass IQ from EBS as, where, as far as functionality is concerned. But right now I have the EBS units off <clears throat> and I'm going to use the Eventides. I like having a compressor after the envelope filters just because that way it's, I don't know, it just kind of like um, squishes everything to where um, the, all the volumes stay the same. There's no like volume spikes in my in my sound to potentially overpower a drummer or a guitarist or whatever like tonally. So, all right, so if I turn on this octaver, Okay, my mistake. I have octave up on there. Alright. There we go. Octave down. Sorry about that. I've been messing with that octave up, trying to kind of imitate those, you know, the 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 Jimi Hendrix sounding like uh the purple haze from Rocktron. That's another pedal I wish I had never gotten rid of. I love that thing. So if anyone has one and just doesn't want it, I'll give you my address. <clears throat> All right. I don't want to pay for it because I already have the Eventide, which is 100 times better. But the Purple Haze would be cool. So anyway, um, here's the octave down on the Eventide. Pretty nice. Like that, that one's smooth. <clears throat> so what I deliberately did is if I chose to have my EBS Octabase on and my Eventide octave down on, um, they're not in the same speaker. So this is kind of cool. That way I thought, well, I don't want to, I don't want to run an octaver into an octaver, but to have the, do, the two different types of octaver each coming out of a separate speaker is, it is in this room, it sounds so incredible especially through those Aki grooves. <clears throat> so I did the same, like, I'm a really huge Bootsy fan, so when I was younger, I remember reading something about him using like three rigs and having a, a Mutron 3 set at different settings in every rig. So now, oh, let me just show you just the EBS, or the Eventide envelope filter. <laughs> So having that, now adding the EBS envelope filter, the bass IQ, to the other side. It just, it just brings so much character to that tone in the room to have two different envelope filters, each in a different cabinet, running simultaneously. Like they're, the thresholds on them are a little different, the, the Q rating's a little different, so it's pretty cool. All that being said, now I want to show you only the Eventides functioning. So I've got, now I've got the envelope filter, you know, it says auto for auto wah on the screen, if you can even read that from where my phone's at. And then here's the octave down, here's the Eventide tone. So pretty awesome. Quickly, here's the difference. Here's the EBS version.
Now, once upon a time, um, long days ago when I was younger, uh, I used four AccuGroove 210s, and I loved playing around with that. But speaking of haters, you know, there's nothing, you know, frankly, I was with a band and we got to open for Blondie. <laughs> and the sound tech guy, bring, he walks up with an XLR cable. He's like, what do you need? And I'm like, oh, uh, can I get four DIs? And he's like, no, you can have one. And I was just standing there like, oh, why, why did you even ask me what I need? He was, he was clearly annoyed. He could see that I had four different cabinets. And, and frankly, it was like a pop punk band. I don't even know why I brought four cabinets. Um, no one let me use them anyway. Not the band was cool with it, but, and, and now I realize like, you're not, no one's going to put the bass player in like quad mono so you can open for Blondie. It was cool to open for Blondie, but yeah, I had to quickly decide which, which cabinet with the least effects was going to be heard through the PA because of the DI. So that was a peripheral side funny note. But now I only have two. If I had four cabinets right now, I think it would be incredible to hear um, the Eventide Octaver in one, the Eventide Auto Filter in one, the EBS Octaver in one, and the EBS uh, Envelope Filter in the other. That would be pretty cool. But uh, the average layperson would not notice it at a gig or anything. So... You know, it'd be cool in my garage, but to cart that kind of value of gear around to just be happy that way might, might not be worth it, depending on my mood, who knows. So that pop punk band, speaking of that, when I went on tour with them, they were called Derby, and um, we had an album called Third Time's a Charm, and in support of that album, we went on a little tour and sold the album, so the CDs, and so <clears throat> we were in Spokane, Washington, and at the time, I was using two Digitech multi-effect processors. I had I had the four cabinets, and I had um, a guitar effects processor as, in stereo to two cabinets, and the bass effects processor in stereo to the other. Um, the stage was completely dark, and our singer went running out on the stage as the song began. By mistake, he tripped and he stepped on one of my pedal boards, one of the the multi-effects processors. When it was my turn, I come running out and. I hit a note and it was the most god awful sound. I was like, "What just happened?" and and I walk up and unintentionally he had stepped on something and changed a patch on the guitar version, and it was just um, redlining everything. And I look down on the floor and it says EVH1. You know, use your imagination. The gain structure was flip flopped like. I can't believe my cabinets made it through that next minute and a half of me attempting to figure out what was going on while I continued to play the opening song. Due to that experience, from then on, I've kind of vowed that with my pedals and my pedal board, I make certain that, let's say, anything and everything was on full tilt, I would want to make sure at least that I could make it through a song while I was trying to troubleshoot what was going on if something wasn't right. So I'll change all my settings and make adjustments thoroughly to make it so that if something was totally wrong, unbeknownst to me, at least I could still play the song and the audience wouldn't be like, oh gosh, what is going wrong? Standing there in horror on my behalf. I made sure of that. So that being said, I thought, wow, um, this, this isn't as cool in my opinion as what I feel like I just showed you with the splitting of the, the even tides and then the... Um, having the splitting of the EBS pedals. That's the, that's the part I'm enamored with. But I did make sure that hypothetically, if my EBS bass IQ went in to the Eventide Octaver, and then my EBS Octaver went in to the Eventide envelope filter, that it would still sound good, and it does. Here we go. Oop. So there you have it. Um, one more cool thing to show you, if, if I use that and I just, I throw uh, a little bit of this Creation, Creation, excuse me, Creation Audio Labs Holy Fire 9, I'll put just, I'll just turn one on with the overdrive cranked and the distortion shut off. <laughs> Now I'm just going to switch sides. All 
All right, haters, uh, don't trash my videos unless you're going to post all the cool things you do. Like, I'm not saying my stuff's cool. I think it's cool. Just just don't do it. Um, so there you have it. Uh, I love the Eventide gear. I love, I just love all my pedals. I'm so grateful to the companies that um, kind of help me out with this stuff and allow me to do just crazy fun experiments with pedals. And I get to show all my students uh, for guitar and bass lessons and help them create their own pedal boards and their own tones. It's a lot of fun. I love, I love effects. And, um, so yeah, if you're, if you're hating on it, just, uh, don't hate unless you have your video up to show me how awesome what you're doing is. And I honestly, I'll probably like it. So anyway, have an amazing day.